Hi there, my name is Marty Zoffinger, and this is my boat, the Contiki 3. And these are my solar panels. The two most challenging things about my first attempt at solar energy was choosing which hardware to buy, and then figuring out where and how to mount all of this stuff. There are obviously a ton of different ways you can mount these. You can buy hardware or you can make it yourself. Mm. And of course, sometimes you might find yourself in a precarious position just to get them mounted onto your hardtop. I had a job for over 10 years climbing ladders and doing crazy things. So to me, this was kind of second nature. Not the craziest thing I've ever done. Since I was about to climb a big ladder on top of a boat, I had to be mindful of everybody else who came by thrown awake. In between those moments, I was able to slide these panels up there rather easily. These are 200 watt panels, weighing over 50 pounds each. That's something you should consider when you're mounting these to your boat. Then once you get them up there, every two panels get connected with these Y connectors. One set per two panels. This way two positives and two negatives become one positive and one negative. Nice one. I needed two of those sets for these three panels so that I would wind up with only one positive and one negative wire coming down off of that bimini. And this is where I would pass them to the inside of the boat. I found this little cover lying around. And you can see I put a drip loop in the end of the wire. That would keep rain from finding its way through those holes. Then to finish it up, I put some thatch up there. And you can see it slides really nice under those panels, the way that I had them mounted. And you can see I put two pieces of wood there that were covered in fiberglass. And that's right where the mounting holes were. Because it was such a low profile application, it became a little difficult to hide the wires underneath the panels. But I thought it would give a really nice clean look. My background in construction and building stuff really came into play here because like I said, mounting these things can be one of the biggest challenges. Okay, let's bolt them down. The next step in the process, from the panels, the wires go to a charge controller. There's basically two different types, MPPT, which is what I got, and PWM. That's heavy thing. The MPPTs are way more efficient, and if you want to learn more about it, you can look it up, but I highly suggest this type of charge controller. Here you can see the two wires from those panels, and for the first time, I saw this thing come to life. Hey, we got power on. Look at that. Looking for batteries. Be patient, my sweetness. <laughs> batteries are definitely the second part of this. From the charge controller, it goes to the batteries, but they're not supposed to be in the same compartment. So I chose to have my batteries live in the cooler that is also a seat but it's also suggested that wherever that compartment is, that it should be vented. That's why I'm cutting that hole. This old crate here had a really cool design to it. So I stole a piece of it, and between that and some white starboard, I was able to make a nice little cover for that hole. This allegedly prevents the buildup of hydrogen <laughs> from the batteries, which is probably important. It was a tight fit. 
but with a couple of bolts, I was able to get it attached to the cooler. And the edges had a little caulking on them, again, to keep the rain out. There's the batteries, three 100 amp batteries, and the wires went under the cooler, under the fiberglass floor, and into the helm up front. Those wires would get put into the other side of the charge controller. Now, we got batteries. What are we reading, 22%? That's pretty cool. It shows my amperage, what's coming in, voltage, a bunch of information. That's very interesting. I'm gonna let that do its thing. Oh my God. In uh, the meantime, I'm gonna construct a cover for that so to keep any kind of dripping water off of it. And as the sun comes up, I'll see what kind of uh, electricity we're making. That's pretty exciting. Thank you, solar panels. During heavy rains, sometimes water would get in through where the compass is or where the switches were. So I didn't want water dripping on my charge controller or the inverter that eventually went there. So I took this cardboard template and cut out some fiberglass mat. This is the same stuff I made the bimini tops out of. Then I would lay the fiberglass on top of the cardboard once it was all taped together. and make myself a little custom hutch to trammel my electronics. Enter one of my least favorite things. Once the resin hardened, I trimmed the edges so they'd be a little less sharp and gave them a little sanding. This part is a little awning that went over this fan. There were actually two of these computer fans that I had that I installed into this box because the electronics can generate heat and dissipating that heat would ensure that they function properly. These two fans would run directly off the power made by the solar panels. And it makes this raggedy box look actually pretty cool. If I could wrestle it into the helm, <laughs> which was no easy task. But once we was inside there, it made a much more dry spot for my stuff. That's your home. Then it was a little fuse panel to help distribute some of the wiring. Okay, now I got a fuse block and I'm gonna take the wires that I ran from the batteries that are under my seat and attach them to the fuse block. First I'm gonna measure them. I'm gonna take some Advil. Oh, this crawling around nonsense. Okay. A little bit windy today. Nice in here though. There you go. Inside this place was not exactly the neatest area on the boat, but that's what it's meant for. Wires, electronics, cables, things like that. So I didn't bother making things very pretty under there. The floor on the upper helm though, got a little bit of an upgrade. I glued down some of this foam, on top of which I put some artificial grass. It covered up the channel that I had cut to run my wires, and it would make for a much nicer place to stand for hours and hours and hours during my upcoming trip. So now the wires that go underneath the fiberglass are covered up by this nice soft grass. I have an inverter inside that little hutch that I built under the helm. And now the three panels that are up here on the very top of the boat are equivalent to 600 watts of 
charging power. The wires go down the side to the charge controller and from there it goes to the batteries. There's those batteries under my seat. Then big wires, I think eight gauge from there go to the fuse panel and an inverter. The inverter is a pure sign inverter. All that means is that the energy it makes is very steady. It doesn't have spikes in the energy which uh, could cause problems for electronics. That inverter is running right now only this outlet right here. You power the outlet with this little button here and then this becomes hot and you are now able to run 110 volt stuff on solar panels. I also have an anchor light that runs on those three panels upstairs. So does my chart plotter and there's a uh, charger here that'll run my phone. This is a spreader light that I'm going to install later on and that'll illuminate the front of the boat also running off these three panels. And I have a brand new VHF radio and that's going to come in very handy. That also is running on those three panels. Aside from that, I got the little fan that's running on it as well. Those panels you see down there are running the house, which is downstairs. Let's go have a look. Okay, first, these are the controllers or uh, monitoring stations that come with the charge controllers. I have two charge controllers because I have two separate systems. As a matter of fact, I've got three, but I'll get to that in a second. Behind this uh, sign here, which the dogs pay no attention to, is one of the charge controllers. And behind this, tucked up under there, is the second inverter. They're running off of four batteries, which I have down below in the engine compartment. Those batteries are equivalent to 400 amp hours. That's going to run my refrigerator and all the lights inside and an outlet. I have an outlet here. So when I'm underway downstairs, and I can drive from downstairs, I can have a computer plugged in, and I've got a control station here that runs USB power to the iPad and my phone and uh, the radio here, which is Bluetooth, so I can connect to that, and it's got speakers all around the boat. All of these systems that I'm mentioning are running on solar panels. It's pretty amazing. Like I said, I'm brand new to this, and yet I was able to get it all done. Things have come a long way in the past 10 years or so with solar energy. Eventually I'm going to paint the boat, so please don't pay attention to that, but here's the seventh panel right here on the front of the boat. That has its own charge controller. It runs all the way through the boat towards the front, and that's what's powering my windlass. So when I'm at anchor and I'm pulling the anchor up and down, I'm not worried about killing my house batteries or draining things uh, to a dangerous point where I won't have lights at night. All of these redundant systems will help because charge controllers were expensive. If I had one charge controller for seven panels, it would have been a lot of money. So I just wanted to do this video to show you guys that it can be done. I do wish that I had uh, some Amazon affiliate links so I could give you direct links. But I will tell you this, without any compensation, I've gotten the panels and the batteries from EcoFriendly on eBay. They sent both of those, the batteries, I mean, real heavy, but they, they were all sent to me through the mail. Then there was the charge controllers. See, what you're going to find a lot is that solar panels and stuff come in packages, and oftentimes the packages have the less desirable charge controllers. The really good ones are the MPPTs. So uh, you can find them usually separate. They're going to be more expensive, but they are way more efficient. They've got a lot of advantages. If you're interested in that, look up MPPT charge controllers versus, and it'll show you uh, reasons why you should get those instead of the cheaper versions. Um, aside from that, I mean, there's really nothing mysterious about it. Although it did freak me out the first time I had the 12 volt refrigerator sitting in the middle of the warehouse with a battery on top of it. And I opened the door and it was cold inside. And a little light came on and it blew me away because it wasn't plugged in. It seems like magic. So hopefully it works a spell when I'm out there on the uh, Great Loop. Uh, time will tell how efficient it is and how much energy I can really pull from the, my battery banks. I'm excited to find out. Of course, I'll share it with you. Meantime, this has been another preparation video. There's a few more short ones and before you know it, first of the year will be here and I'll be underway. Catch you guys later.